I'm so Good evening, everyone. With the posted time having arrived and a quorum of members present, I'll call the Public Health and Safety Committee for Monday, May 15th, 2023 to order. The first item on our agenda for the evening is to approve the minutes of our previous meeting from 417 of 23, copies of which are in the packets. Did anybody note any revisions or corrections they wanted to see for the minutes? If not, I'll take a motion to approve the minutes. Motion from Larson. Is there a second? Second by Denny. Further discussion? Seeing none, members in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? None are opposed, so that motion carries. Item number two is to consider approval or denial of various license applications. Um, we have three recommended denials for this evening. Our ordinance allows those individuals to address the committee if they so choose. Um, first denial for operator bartender is Philip Camosa. Is Philip Camosa with us this evening? Okay, so we've not heard from him. Um, let the record show he has not appeared in person tonight. Um, Alicia Rodman, Alicia Rodman. She has not appeared to address the committee either. Um, public dr transport driver, Don Alstein. Come on up. And uh, your application we had held over from last month um, for evidence of rehab. I know right before the meeting convened, you had mentioned that you had a received those letters um, by mail though and recently yeah um, would it be possible for you to provide those to the chief and then chief let me know if you feel that you need more time with those we could um, hold on action if you need more time yeah I'd like an opportunity to review them review them okay um, so if we're good with that um, the committee would hold action on the item for tonight give the chief some time to review that and the record, get the two together, right. and then he'll make a decision for our next meeting. All right. If okay. that works, thank you for bringing those in though. No problem. All righty. All right, is that it then? That's all you have to do for tonight. Okay. And then um, um, the chief will review the evidence that you've submitted and then um, make a recommendation or uphold his original one, whichever, and then we'll get those results at our next meeting, okay. uh, which is the third Monday of June. Okay. All righty. Thank you for coming in. If I could get a reminder letter Okay, sounds good. Um, with that, um, we also have um, a number of class one and class two events. Uh, we have the um, annual renewals for every place in town and all of the servers. Um, and we have one new um, sidewalk cafe for the Honora Hotel at 209 Grant Street, um, which is at the corner of 3rd and Grant. Um, does anybody have any questions on any of that? Um, if not, I'll accept a recommendation to accept, um, accept or deny licenses as recommended by staff with the exception of Donald Alstein, who we're going to wait on again. Mary oh, Mary, go ahead. Did you get the um, letters from uh, Philip Camosa that I emailed you? We did. So yeah. I think the reason he's not here is I think he was just waiting to hear whether you were going to change that or not. I don't think he... I'm thinking he didn't really understand that he still needed to come. Oh, okay. Yeah, I mean, my, my recommendation still stands based on the policy and, um, you know, in the interest of consistency. I think it's uh, prudent to recommend a denial still. On, okay, on those, based on, on the Mr. record. Kamosa. And yeah. yeah, I didn't, when I saw the letters also that had come in our email, I none of them were demonstrative of um, specific rehabilitation. You know, I mean, they're kind of character references, but they weren't evidence of you know experience or rehabilitation or counseling or anything that would lead me to think that anything was any different other than the fact that he's got some support amongst his coworkers. so um, I guess if that if if everyone's amenable to that we would leave him in the batch unless someone wishes to <clears throat> go ahead Chad I mean if we do deny him he can reapply correct yes okay yep so and when the fact that he's not here we can't really ask him you know questions as far as what what he may have wanted to tell us about the record but um he certainly could reapply if need be so 
Um, anyway, with that, I would accept a motion to accept or deny, deny licenses as recommended by staff with the exception of Donald Alstein, who will hold till June to give the chief time to review the evidence that he brought in tonight. Motion by Larson. Is there a second? I would second. Second by Denny. Further discussion or questions? <clears throat> Seeing none, members in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. None are opposed. So those license are, licenses are either accepted or denied, um, as recommended. Um, that brings us to item number three, which is a hearing, um, a request for rent abatement um, for the property address 709 Jefferson Street. Um, the petitioning tenants are Mane and Billy Chandavong, and the landlord is Bai Vu. Are all of the parties for this hearing here this evening? Come up to the front, please. Okay, are you Billy? Yes. Okay, and this is my mom. This is your mom? Mane, okay. And is the is the landlord here this evening? I don't see. Bye. Don't Bye. See. Okay. Um, so we'll let the record show that the landlord is not present. Um, right. So the committee will proceed with um, conducting the hearing. Now, um, do we have? Do we also have an interpreter for tonight's hearing? Yes. Do we feel that we need an interpreter? An interpreter is, uh, joining via WebEx. Can you hear us? Okay. Yeah, yeah, this is Ku Yang. I'm the interpreter for the Wu matter. Yes. Okay. Do you have an interpreter? Okay. Who needs the interpreter? Yeah. Yeah. You can do it. I think we're just fine. We can do it. Fine. Which? For my mom. But, but on, the, we're on the request, it said that the um, tenants would need an interpreter. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. And okay, so your wish was that you had an interpreter for your mom? Uh, it wasn't my wish, but I think we'll be fine okay. without interpreter. Okay, and we have the interpreter on WebEx also, so if there's a specific question, okay. um, we certainly can refer to him okay. um, for a detailed explanation. Okay. Um, so what I'll do is I'll kind of break this up into sections. There's a um, process we go through to start the hearing. Um, so the reason that we're here today um, is that we're convening a hearing concerning housing code violations that either exist or recently existed um, at the property located at 709 Jefferson Street in the city of Wausau. As a result of these violations, a tenant at that property has requested an abatement hearing seeking to have this committee issue an order to abate rent at that address for the time period that the violations existed. Um, do we have any questions about that part? Okay. <clears throat> Um, rent abatement can be authorized by this committee pursuant to Wassa Municipal Code um, after the hearing and after the evidence has been considered. Um, and this hearing will um, is where we will accept that evidence um, and you'll be able to explain to us um, uh, what's happening at the property. Um, we also have our property inspector present in the room um, who inspected your property if there's questions for him. Um, the violations which are alleged to exist or existed prior um, were contained in an order that was sent out by the City of Wausau um, Inspection Department dated January 17th and February 16th of 2023. Have you guys received that those documents? I think so. Yes. Okay. So. All right. And we'll note that we're unable to hey, confirm Receipt by the landlord because the landlord is not present this evening. Um, this is actually it's an informal review hearing. Um, we will um, we always give the opportunity for the landlord and the tenant to be heard about the violations. Obviously, either party has the right to be represented by an attorney if they so choose. Um, however, um, in the absence of an attorney, the witnesses themselves, landlord or tenant, will be given the right to question, cross-examine, and um, each other's witnesses, if there's witnesses. So um, with the landlord not in attendance tonight, uh, it's probably a safe assumption the landlord has not appeared or brought any witnesses um, to support his, his or her case. Um, and so um, 
certain there's certain things in the hearing um, that are relevant and certain things that are not. Um, things that are not relevant are, as an example, are things that the tenant had had not paid rent in the past, that the landlord doesn't agree with the fact that this option exists in the city, um, that another tenant in a particular building has not complained about a similar issue, um, that the landlord has problems with other buildings. So we try to keep it focused on your experience in your building at your address, even if the landlord owns multiple properties. Um, things that are relevant um, are the nature and the extent and the seriousness of the violations that are happening in the home. Um, the length of time that those conditions have existed and how they've affected the tenant's ability to use the property. Um, whether the violations were caused by um, uh, the tenant or the tenant's guests are relevant um, and whether those violations were caused by factors or situations that were perhaps beyond the landlord's control. We also consider things like that. Um, each side is eligible to present evidence. So things like photographs, um, bills for services if you've had to have work done or make repairs, um, or other documents. If you have documents to present, we'll take those um, and review them and keep a copy for the file. Um, as the committee chair, it's my responsibility to decide what re um, evidence and testimony is relevant. Um, if um, testimony is repetitive or irrelevant, um, I can request that that testimony be stopped. Um, do we have any questions on any of the procedural stuff with the hearing at all? No. Okay. Okay. Can I ask a quick Go ahead. Sure. Question. Are both of you tenants yes. at the property? Both yes. of you live there. Okay. Thank you. Okay. And so what we do is we request that the tenant um, present their case first. Um, have you brought any witnesses, um, Billy, or is it just you and your mom? Uh, it's just me and my mom. Okay. Um, and then also um, eligible to testify in this matter is um, Travis from our inspections department who inspected the property. Um, he's eligible to be a witness for either side. Um, so we would ask that the clerk swear in all witnesses at once as a group. Um, so um, um, both tenants and then Travis, if you guys would um, step up um, for swearing in. And we'll just clarify for procedural um, clarification that the landlord is not present tonight. Um, Bai Bai Vu is not present and has not sent any witnesses in their absence. For clarification, okay, go ahead. Okay, Caitlin, please, please raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear that the testimony you are about to give at this hearing is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? So help you God. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Madam Chair, can I point of inquiry Certainly. here? Yes. We're listing 705 and 709. The, the, the complaint forms, is which one is it or is it? It's 709. 705, I believe, is the landlord's address. There was a, when the form was originally submitted, it include, included the landlord's home address. Okay. But the property violations in question are at 709 according to the materials that I have here. That's correct. Okay. okay. I drove by there and I wasn't sure. Okay, okay. thanks. Sure. Um, okay. And so it, with rent abatement, um, it is um, the responsibility of the tenant to um, show us by the preponderance of the evidence that the landlord, that situation exists at the property and that the landlord has failed to correct um, that situation. And we also, as a part of that, um, we'll hear from our inspection and zoning division who viewed the property. Uh, that's what we have Travis for. Um, so, um, Billy and Mane, would you just, I guess, um, tell us a little bit about what's happening at your home? What conditions are are you t um, seeing in the home? Okay. Well, during the winter, t <clears throat> during the winter time, the, the bathroom shower it freezes. Okay. And there's there is no type of ventilation, like you know the air vent. Okay. And we have a few broken windows in, in the basement. And also our carbon monoxide detector, there's only one which doesn't work. Okay. Okay. Uh, and also the, like the water pressure in the kitchen, it's very slow. Okay. So, you know, and the carpeting also, it's really bad. Okay. 
All right. When it's warm, the moment of. Oh, when it when it's raining, the the roof uh, on the front porch it leaks, and the ceiling in the bathroom also there's it, it also leaks when you turn on the hot water in the bathroom. Okay. And so, do you have leakage inside the the living quarters of the home as well, or just in the porch? Uh, on the porch. Just in the porch. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. And any any additional things that you've noted? Just no. Okay. All right. Um, committee members, do you have any questions um, for Mr. Chandavong or his mother? Also, Your Honor. Um, Go ahead. Also, the 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 toilet when we, when you use the bathroom, it, you have to flush it like at least three times. Okay. So, so that's not fully no, functional either. No. Okay. I have some questions, um, if, Madam Sheriff. If sure. If you may. Um, yep. Did you take these pictures that we have in our packet here? I did. Okay. Okay. So, like, um, this picture three here, what is this hole in the floor where, is that in the living? The picture, so I don't know which. Okay. Oh. Let me take a look here and see if I can find that. Can I, those should I bring them around and... I think they're they're in an email that I think was part of the. Yeah, they're in an email that we have here. Okay. Let me see if we can get them. Would you like to come around and take a look? Mary, you sent it. I have. What do you mean? Trying to find this. Okay, yep, I think I see it here. Got it. Oh, okay. oh, yep, okay, so they're on the, their photos are on the TV now. So which pictures? This is the third picture. Okay. So that picture shows one of the basement windows that's covered with cardboard, and then on the bottom, there's a hole in the foundation that goes yes. out and cold air comes in for them. Okay. Uh, yeah, okay, now is that the CO, there's the water pressure? Yeah, that it's really low. Okay, this is the The only CO. smoke that was in the house and non-functioning. Okay. Um, that one I don't think pertains to this um, hearing, though it wasn't rolled up. Or okay. That one shows a basement window, no glass in it, just covered with wood. Okay. That one, the right middle pane has got a hole in it. Okay. Like right there. So they have a, there's a back porch, but it's really a, it's, it's an enclosed, it's part of the house. Okay. Like where they keep like some cooking, like pots and pans and different stuff in. And that's what my original call over there was for, is that the ceiling is leaking really bad. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. So that kind of shows the water damage from that, and that shows the condition of the roof. Okay. And again, just a photo of the leaking back. The ceiling tile there? Yeah. Okay. And that was just a window that's taped over that, and it's still in that same room um, with the leaky roof. Okay. So it's covered, though, so that the window doesn't function? It's, right. Okay. That's the last picture. Okay. Does anyone have any questions about the photographs? Go ahead, Doug. Uh, my question is, how long have you lived in the home? Been there two years, though. Two years. Okay. And has it been like this the whole time? Yes. Okay. Okay. And Travis, when when did you visit the property? When were you requested to come? January 11th of 23 was my first visit. Okay. And you found all these conditions to be to match the photos. Right. Okay. Um, have you been back to the home since? Yes, I was there. Is anything fixed? No. And so them photos I took last week. Okay. So he was supposed to be in compliance, but he's not. Right. And then I actually met the owner there one day too. I think on March. 
Was the owner made aware of this prior to the inspection visit? I mean, as a tenant, have you been trying to get? Uh, yes. What's your communication been with the landlord? She's, she's repeatedly told him, you know, the first winter we were there. I mean, and he said, he's always telling her, yeah, it's an old house and this and that, and you'll get it fixed, and it's three, four weeks later, it's nothing, you know. Sure. He, he keeps on putting it off. But. And the pipe freezing situation in the winter, has that occurred both winters that you've lived yes. there? Yes. Okay. We moved in there in October, and it was just a few weeks right after that. Okay. Okay. He had sent uh, a repairman to come fix it, mm -hmm. but all he did was to change the shower head, and that was basically it. Okay. So no work in the basement or anything, or uh, no new faucets or anything? Mm -hmm. Um, does anyone else have any questions on the conditions at the property? Me. Go ahead, Tara. Okay. Hi. I'm the assistant city attorney, so I just want to get a couple of things um, cleared up, um, just even basic things. So when did you move in there? October of 2020. October of 2021. Okay, and I think your complaint said you do not have a written lease. Is, uh, is that right? Or is it a verbal lease? Do you have a written? Oh, we have a written lease, yes. We have a written lease. Oh, you do? Yes. Okay. And what is the rent under that lease? $800 a month. Has it been the amount of your rent since you moved in? Yes. Okay. Have you been paying your rent yes. every month so it's paid up through this month? That's correct. I mean, he only lives like two houses down. It's even hard for him to come get the rent money. Okay. Okay. And um, we're, how, how did the inspection department find out about this? Did you complain and call or? Oh, he, One of my sister called for the city to check on it. Your sister? One of them, yes. Yeah, who, who is it? She's supposed to be here, but she's. But I mean, I don't know her name. So just uh, a, don't judge. A family member? Yeah, a family member. Okay. okay. Have you made any repairs yourself at the home that you've no. paid for or anything? The only thing that we changed was the hoses for the, uh, under the kitchen sink, that was it, because it was leaking really Oh, well, the supply, water yeah. supply lines? Okay. Um, can I ask Travis a couple sure. questions? Sure, go ahead. Okay, so um, you went there twice, is that right, Travis? According, because you sent out two letters. Okay, but as far as uh, the notice of violation letters, I right. guess there's two. Yes, I went there on January 11th, and then I went back February 16th. Okay. Yeah, I called because the roof was leaking bad again, or in another spot. Now, based on your understanding of the ordinance, are the violations with respect to the roof rent impairing or under our rent abatement ordinance? I don't believe they are. Okay. So really, we're looking at the first set of violations from your inspection of January 11th. Correct. Were okay. all those items listed in your letter of January 11th, rent impairing violations under the ordinance? Yes. All of them? They should have been. Did you, do you have your letter? No. You don't have your letter with you? Uh -uh. Did you just give it to him? Yeah. 
did you put in the letter for all those violations that they were all run debatable after each item? Oh, I guess I don't put them in the letter, so, but the windows to be glazed is rent debatable, windows to be tight says rent debatable, windows to be openable says rent debatable. Uh, plumbing fixtures, rent debatable item, plumbing systems, smoke detectors, carbon monoxide detectors, both rent debatable. Is failure to um, provide rental registration information a rent debatable item? I don't know the answer to that. Well, are, are you looking at the same letter than I am, I wonder? It does not say it is on there. Okay, hold on. Unless there's another page to it, which there should be because it doesn't have my signature. Well, that could be <laughs> the problem. That could be. Let's All right, see. let me pull out my letter. Thank you. Is, oh, is that it? It doesn't say it's rent debatable. Okay, so here's the letter I, I have, Travis. January 17th letter. I see there's four violations there, and I don't see the parentheses that says rent debatable after each of those numbered paragraphs. I guess that's what I'm trying to get at. Was that notice? advising them that all the violations were run abatable or just some? Just some. Okay, all right, thank you. And um, how many smoke detectors and carbon monoxide detectors under our code are supposed to be at this property? One on each level. And so how There's many are they missing? Well, all of them technically, because that one that didn't work. So how many would that be? Six. Or th three smokes and three carbons. Three smokes or, and three carbons, okay. Or three combo units. Okay. Can you, can you go through the window thing? How many windows are broken? Are they windows, um, as far as our, our rent abatement ordinance says, are these windows um, at risk of impairing the security to the to the premises. I, I don't know how big they are. Are they small? Can people fit through them? Are they on the first floor, just in the basement? Although, I'm, I guess the windows are still there. The, the one that's cracked is on the first floor, and then all the other windows are in the basement. Um, and, I mean, nobody could get in based on what, I mean, they got the one boarded over with wood, so it's secure. So one's boarded over. Yeah. And the other one, one of them in the pictures you have is just got broke, broken window or no? Okay. Yeah. So is the broken window allowing entry of cold air to the extent that the pipes are freezing? Is that where we figure the, so no. there's a lack of heat in the area that's freezing versus? Yes, it doesn't, it's not insulated and doesn't have a heat run going in there properly. Okay. So it's, when it gets cold, the drain uh, pipes can freeze. Okay, so is it the only bathroom? No. <laughs> There's two bathrooms? But I think the upstairs one is just like a half bath, right? Okay. Okay. So when you're looking at the windows, are the problems with the windows that they're not functional, that they're broken, or both? Some of both. I guess it depends on which window you're referring to. So like the Can one you in the, go through with us and explain? So the one that was covered with plastic in that pantry wouldn't be... Um, it's like that one, you know, it's covered up, not functional. And I think it's just, they have it like that because it leaking so bad they're trying to keep the water out. So would you call that, you, there were three violations in your letter. Windows to be glazed, windows to be tight, and windows to be openable. This window, you consider all three of those things, or less than? That one would be just to be tight. Okay. Yeah, um, I could be wrong, but I think they're all hammered with nails. Okay. I could be wrong, but I can't remember. And then the other two windows are those kind of little basement so, windows? Yeah, so that one's broken. So it would need to be reglazed. Then the one to the right of that was the one that's covered with wood. Okay. It's missing 
that one. No. It's not glazed. Okay. Got it. Okay, thank you. Like that one, that window is not a truly broken window. It's, it just needs to be repaired because of the foundation part of it. Additional questions um, for either the tenants or for Travis. Committee members, go ahead, Doug. So the window was that where you showed the rot there? That one, the with the hole in the foundation. Yes. Yeah, it, Is that one of the? Can you see that from the outside? No. Or do you have a picture of that? No, it's, it looks fine from the outside yeah. for the most part. Okay. It's um, that that one's under a deck, so you can't really see it from the oh, okay from the outside. So then it's a, maybe a grading issue. Your pitch is not yeah. right. Okay. Okay. Additional questions? Okay. Um, at this time, we would give the landlord um, an opportunity to present testimony or evidence. The landlord has not appeared. Um, so um, we'll give the um, evidence presented by the inspection um, department and the tenant um, the relevant weight. Um, if no one else has questions for any of the witnesses, um, then the committee could convene in closed session to um, deliberate on the rent abatement uh, request. Um, would someone read the closed session language under item three? Okay, thank you. Closed session pursuant to section 19.851A of Wisconsin statutes for the purpose of considering the following. Deliberating concerning a case which was the subject of any judicial or quasi-judicial trial or hearing before the governmental body. Okay, is there a second for Alder Larson's motion? Second. Second by Dinny. We'll do a roll call vote for closed session. McElhaney? Aye. Dinny? Aye. Larson? Aye. Hanky? Aye. And I'll vote aye as well. Um, the committee will move into the Maple Room um, to deliberate on the evidence that it's seen. And then we will return to this chamber to present the findings. So um, you guys can have a seat. Um, don't, don't go anywhere um, because we'll um, come back with our results and you'll get a copy of those results. Okay. What did you say? Do you want me to keep them if they want us to keep Ms. They have a right did, to an interpreter. Did you want us to keep the interpreter on the line or are, are we good? Uh, You're okay. okay? Okay, so we'll release the interpreter and uh, but we'll come back and give you a readout of our results. Okay. Sounds good. Thank you, Your Honor. Have a good day.